Okay, so now we are ready to build our simple network trainer. Let me go ahead and partition these off. Support classes. Just like that. Nope, go away. Okay, so let's make a region. Uh, network training classes. Okay, so public class simple network trainer. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so what are we going to need? Well, we're going to need stuff to train. So let's call it training materials. Uh, let's do a public backpropagation network. We'll call it network. Let's do public data set, uh, data set, lowercase d. Um, we're going to need a few private fields to monitor here. So we're going to have a private double error. We're going to have a private int iterations that will count how many times we've, how many epochs we've trained. And we'll need a private permutator Oops, we'll call it IDX. All right. We're going to need some public stuff. Public fields. We'll need a public double, let's call it max error uh, 0 0.1, something kind of big, and max iterations equals something kind of small, 100,000. Um, public training rate, sorry, this is public double training rate equals 0 0.25, um, and momentum equals 0 0.15. These are just going to serve as default values. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up a constructor. Public um, simple network trainer. And they're going to pass in a backpropagation network. We'll call it BPN. And they're going to pass in a data set to train on. We'll call it capital DS. OK. So we're going to set network equal to BPN. And we're going to set data set equal to DS. Um, we're going to need to create our permutator. So IDX is a new permutator on how many items? Well, let's do the following. Let me go back to my support classes, go into my data set. Let's create a quick little accessor field here. So public int capital S size uh, only has a get method, which returns data dot count. Okay, so that'll return the number of items, the number of data points in the data set. So let's go back, collapse that. And we're going to need to set IDX equal to new permutator on data set dot size items. Okay, and what else? Uh, I guess iterations equals zero. All right, that ought to do it. So I guess we'll call this constructor and uh, training method. Okay, so public void train data set. Uh, let's do a bunch of junk while Let's do it while the error is greater than max error and the iterations is less than max iterations. Okay. Now to guarantee prepare to train epic. So to guarantee that we're going to be able to actually exit this thing and not be stuck in a loop, let's go ahead and do this iterations plus plus. Let's set the error equal to zero. 
and let's go IDX dot permute. Um, let's just go ahead and use the same thing, data set dot size. Okay. That'll shuffle stuff around. And then we will train this epic. Okay. So for int i equals zero, i is less than data set dot size <coughs> i plus plus um, error plus equals network dot train on what are we training on? Well by reference we need to give it the input which is in data set dot data of um, idx of i that entries input um, by reference we need to give it the desired output so data set dot data of idx of i dot output <coughs> and the training rate will be training rate and the momentum will be momentum just like that okay now um, I left all this stuff here public so that we can um, just set them from the outside once we've loaded this thing up with stuff to train on and um, we should be able to just call train data set and it should do it all right so let's go try it out here um, well I'm gonna need to have a few things first I'm gonna need to have training data <coughs> so so I'm gonna go ahead and load up the XOR training data that we created in a previous video document um, in fact it was I think in the data set one and it should look like this okay this is the document element it has the data set element with all of our data points so I will send it this data set element to create my data set so let me close that <coughs> new document okay um, doc dot load I have mine stored here e colon slash temp slash uh, XOR data set dot XML and this XML is just it's available I have a link to it in the data set video you can just download it if you want to do it that way um, okay so we're also going to need a network uh, network to train so we're gonna need well actually first we're gonna need an integer array layer sizes equals new int array let's give it three layers and let's give it sizes two to one all right and I'm doing that because this I'm gonna train the XOR data, so I have two inputs, one output. I decided on having three layers, and the hidden layer will have two nodes. I also need to have a transfer function array. Uh, let's call it tfunks equals new uh, transfer function array of size three. And it will have transfer function dot none, which is required. Transfer function dot, let's just do sigmoid and transfer function dot linear like that for values all right sorry you can't totally see that well you know it's there I'll put some enters here I'd like to thank Microsoft for auto indenting everything for me when I don't want to that's spectacular um, okay so what's next <laughs> Now I can actually create the network. So back propagation network, let's call it BPN equals new back propagation network. And I will use the second constructor. I need to give it my layer sizes and my transfer functions, T funks, like that. Um, oh, I guess I need to actually create my data set. So up here in my training data, let's create a data set. I'll just call it ds equals new data set uh, just like that ds dot load uh, doc dot uh, document element dot child nodes 
0. And I'm doing this because, if you recall uh, what I just showed you, um, the document element here is root. It contains one child element, the data set, and that data set element is what this load method expects. So I give it data set, which is the first child of the document element, uh, and that is what we want to do. Okay. Now it's complaining here because this technically returns an XML um, node, but I happen to know that this is an XML element, and so I will cast it as an element, and ds.load happens uh, with no problem. Um, also, now that we're here, you can probably tell I should make a dataset constructor that lets me just pass in an XML element, uh, but that's trivial. Okay, so now let's create the network trainer. Uh, so let's do this simple network trainer SNT equals new simple network trainer. Uh, we need to give it the network, so BPN is the network to train. The data set to train on is DS, just like that. Um, let's uh, adjust some of the values. So let's say SNT dot max error equals 0 0.01. Uh, let's make it 0 0.01 to make it nice and small. And SNT dot max iterations is going to equal 0, or sorry, 1, I don't know, million, something huge. So that way we should have good, good data. So let's train. Um, console dot right line training. And uh, SNT dot train data set, just like that. Console dot right line done. All right, so that'll be very exciting. And then actually the last thing I'm going to do is go like this, snt.network.save. And I'm going to go ahead and save the output once I've trained it. So let's, I'm going to stuff this back in my temp folder, xor network.xml. All right, just like that. And so let me hit F5 and see what happens. Training done. All right. Uh, let me see what is in my temp folder. Here's my XOR network. All right, so uh, this is my values. This looks like the correct network, right? Input size two, two layers of size two and one, sigmoid linear. Okay, so I'll do what I did before. I will go ahead and pause this. I will load this all up into Mathematica and plot it to make sure that we get the same results as last time. And I will be right back. Okay, so this is the, uh, the XML here with all of our values that I just showed you. And here it is all plugged into Mathematica, right? Negative 2.9, 3.12, that's these guys here. Uh, the bias, 1.78, or sorry, one. I guess that should be 1.77. That's that guy there, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is all the same crap. So I plug it all in here. Let's go ahead and hit enter. Let's do a plot 3D, f of x, y. And x is going to go between 0 and 1, like before. And y is going to go between 0 and 1, like that. Hit Enter. And there it is. All right. So um, here we go. Uh, right here's one axis, 0 to 1 this direction, and 0 to 1 that direction. So this right here is 0, 0. Right, it's off. This is, I guess, 1, 0, depending which one you want to be your first axis. This is 0, 1 out here, and those are both on, and then over here is 1, 1, and the thing is turned off. All right, so that is that. Um, the network is trained with our training network class, uh, and that is it. So what we're going to do in the future is we're going to take this and add some more functionality to it, uh, do some cool stuff and add some hook methods in here so we can kind of latch onto it and uh, and do whatever we want. So, all right, guys, uh, that is it. Hope you enjoy it, and I will see you soon. Later.